As the strongest Battlegrounds passes its one-year mark, we can all agree that this game has brought us all a great amount of joy over the time we've played it. Becoming a top 10 Roblox game on the website is a testament to that for sure. But as enjoyable as the game is, it's inevitable to prevent the sudden pop-up of controversies that would come along with it. With this, I bring you all the bizarre controversies of the strongest Battlegrounds. I'll be explaining these controversies in order, following a timeline to where we are today. So now, let's go back and talk about the earliest major controversy, the day that the strongest battlegrounds disappeared from Roblox. On the 28th of February 2023, it was a normal day for the game, Saitama Battlegrounds, as it was called at the time. People were enjoying the new character, Garu, as the free character update for him had recently dropped. Then, suddenly the game disappeared from Roblox. You couldn't find it anywhere including your recently played or Roblox's Discover page. When this happened, many players such as myself were confused, wondering what happened to the game. We were just playing it yesterday and now it was... gone. Well, it turned out that the game ended up falling under review, or in other words being private from the general public due to copyright issues with the actual anime One Punch Man, which the game is obviously inspired from. The community went into a panic, fearing the worst as this had happened before with other games inspired from popular Japanese media like Pokemon, Brick Bronze or Shinobi Life 2. When these games came back to the public after copyright issues, players were met by heavy gameplay changes that tended to stray away from the original IP of the media they were inspired from. This unfortunately led to a large number of players leaving these communities, as it wasn't the same game they had originally put hours of progress into. After a week of the game disappearing from Roblox, the developers of Saitama Battlegrounds were able to reopen the game back up to the public on the 4th of March 2023. When playing the game, there were multiple major changes that were implemented to avoid copyright. Things like the name of the characters, the ultimate music, and even the aura of Garu were changed. These changes weren't that hard to get used to thankfully and the community played the game just as it was before. For another month, the game remained with the name, Saitama Battlegrounds, until the development team decided to change it to avoid another incident like before. On the 10th of April 2023, the game officially became the strongest Battlegrounds. For the next few months everything continued as normal, and it seems that copyright was no longer an issue for the game at all. While the extreme dangers of copyright were averted, another problem was beginning to arise. More specifically among a few of the people on the leaderboard. As the strongest battlegrounds began to blow up in popularity, many new players were coming into the game and trying their hand at becoming the strongest. Thanks to this, many people with experience were grinding kills with ease in order to land a spot on one of the leaderboards that you would see in public servers. While some people would grind legitimately, others would use more illicit methods to give them a boost over their peers on the leaderboard. One of the biggest people that ended up being exposed for using illegitimate methods was the former number one player, Keem. If you didn't already know, Keem was the former number one player for kills in the strongest battlegrounds, an accomplishment that takes a lot, and I mean a whole lot of time. We're talking months here. Keem proudly hailed as the true number one kills leader in the strongest battlegrounds for months, with the gap between him and his leaderboard companions so large it seemed inhumane how much he played. That was until the 31st of August 2023. On this day, the Holy Grail dropped a bombshell on Keem, completely exposing him for running an illegitimate kill farming ring in the strongest battlegrounds. I am here today to explain how Keem's 100,000 kills milestone is fraudulent, and to explain how he went about getting those kills in the first place. Apparently, Keem would grind an unusually large amount of kills by paying people in his clan or discord group to throw themselves at him in public servers, and then when he would be attacked by randoms the people which he would farm would protect him. The reward for helping Keem would be 12,212 Vietnamese dong for 100 kills, which when converted to USD is 50 cents. I'm not a financial advisor or anything, but this doesn't seem like a good investment to put your time in. In response to all the drama, Keem uploaded a response to everything he was accused of, this video will tell all my secrets and how I got so many kills so fast. In the video, Keem admits to everything that was brought forth about him, even going as far as to telling us his real name and age. He also claimed to be the first content creator to make videos about the strongest battlegrounds, and claimed that he was not a fraud. Although what Keem did was very taboo, he still maintained some respect since he came forth and admitted more than was needed, even letting go of his number one spot on the leaderboard. The same thing cannot be said for these next group of people though. A month after Keem was exposed, the number of players in the strongest battlegrounds community kept increasing at an astronomical rate. Among a very large chunk of these players were gullible kids, who of course wanted to consume and know more about the game since they enjoyed it so much. When they weren't playing the game, they'd go to YouTube to watch and enjoy content about the game. 
While watching these videos, many of these kids would ask for game passes in the comment section of the videos they would watch. If you didn't already know, in September of 2023 the ability to gift game passes to people was a new feature that had recently been added. A lot of YouTubers used this feature to give back to their community as a thanks for supporting them, and as they showed the process of them doing this in their videos, more people would comment, further boosting engagement and subscribers on their video. Although this feature was a tool to use for good, a much more greedy and deceptive group of people began to notice the power that this feature held over an audience. This group of people came to be known to be the leakers of the strongest battlegrounds. Although there are many legitimate leakers, the group I will focus on will be the more despicable leakers. This group of despicable leakers would make videos pertaining to possible updates about the strongest battlegrounds, usually hinting at Boros or other popular characters from OPM being released. They would often title their video something along the lines of, update releasing right now, or, new something something update. When watching these videos you'll be hooked until the end of the video, waiting for the big news about the new update. This is until you realize that you've just consumed an insane amount of nothing. This is what we call the art of clickbaiting on YouTube. These leakers would also use the previously mentioned method of gifting game passes to viewers in order to boost their videos onto the YouTube algorithm. Throughout the month of October these videos spread like a wildfire, completely drawing in tons of gullible players. It got so out of control that several TSB YouTubers ended up making videos about it, having to warn their own audiences about this issue. If any clickbaiters are watching this, maybe try making actual content once in a while. It may serve you well. You might be asking yourself, why would these people do such a thing? And I think the most simple answer to your question is that bag. These videos often have very little effort put into them, but their titles and thumbnails are very enticing, causing unsuspecting people to click on them. If lucky enough, these videos have the potential to earn lots of money if they end up hitting the algorithm. It would only be so long until leakers could keep up this farce though, and going into November these videos started to slowly, but surely fade out. I can't really find an exact reason as to why, but it's probably because people started getting smart enough to see through the lies. Looking back on clickbait leak videos today, there are barely any of these videos now, and it seems that most of these clickbait leakers moved on with their content. While clickbait videos came and went like a storm though, an even bigger trend was forming in the background. This trend, or to be more specific type of video, was a video style in which toxic encounters were the main focus of the video. This type of video style ended up taking over the strongest battlegrounds content landscape, completely changing the flow of content being uploaded about the strongest battlegrounds. One of the largest creators that ended up appearing as mysteriously as the trend itself is someone named Humbled, a YouTuber with over 150,000 subscribers. Humbled is a TSB creator who mainly focuses his content on killing the toxic players of the strongest battlegrounds, hence, humbling them. Everything was going extremely well for him until the 29th of January 2024. On this day two massive TSB content creators called Loppy and Remkeo came forth allegedly exposing Humbled. Using Loppy's video as a reference, it turns out that Humboldt was not actually a real person, but two people running a singular account. The first part of the duo that runs the channel is a TSB YouTuber called For Davin. Davin is responsible for creating the thumbnails, editing the videos, and running the YouTube channel overall. The second part of the duo is currently an unknown pro player who records the fights and humbles people. Loppy also alleges that all of Humble's videos are staged, even providing strong evidence as to why. You know, President Obama, fresh account, no followers, no friends, like, just showing that these accounts are just made for these videos. Loppy's final major claim was that Fordavin stole the channel from a previous pro player who was replaced. This player's name was Hakest. Hakest was supposedly the owner of the channel, but Loppy says that Davin stole the channel from Hakest and replaced him because he was looking for someone better. In response to all the drama, the Humboldt channel uploaded a video debunking all the claims on the 31st of January 2024. He flipped the narrative on Loppy and Rem KO by saying that they were doing this out of monetary gain, even claiming that Loppy and Rem were hypocrites since they were not strangers to this type of content either. Humble did end up admitting that the channel was run by two people, and shut down the Hakest allegations by saying that Hakest was unfit to assist in the channel to do personal issues. But Davin told him to be consistent, record every day. But he was lacking that consistency, and wasn't as dedicated to the grind of growing a channel as much as I had hoped he was. He also admitted that some videos were staged. Tensions got so big that it led to Humble declaring a 1v2 against Rimkeo and Loppy. So on February 2nd, 2024 a match was held between the three. After a long fought and tiresome battle, the final score ended up being 10 to 4, with Humble losing the fight. The drama ended up dying down with this, and everybody went on with their lives.